Hello everyone, I hope that you are having a fantastic Saturday. I bring you some great news. Bernie Sanders just won the Nevada caucus. Now at the time that I record this video, we don't have all of the results yet. Only 4% of precincts are reporting, but Fox News called it an hour ago. MSNBC, NBC News just called it now. So he won, it's just a matter of how large of a margin has he won by. It looks like it's going to be anywhere between 20 and 37 points ahead of the person in second place. So, I mean, this is absolutely phenomenal. If they're willing to call it this early, then that means they're confident that he's going to have a pretty comfortable margin of victory here. Now, really important things to keep in mind. Early entrance polls show that he was leading not just with the left, but with moderates. I repeat, he's leading all the other candidates when it comes to moderates. He had a commanding lead among Latinos. And what's astonishing is that even after the culinary union tried to tank his campaign, their workers opted for Bernie Sanders. He won decisively in caucuses comprised almost exclusively of culinary workers. And, you know, this is basically a direct repudiation of their attacks on Medicare for All. Now, going to the actual results that we have currently as I record this video, as you can see, just 4% of precincts are reporting. That's only 80 out of 2,097. But Bernie Sanders has a 54.3% total currently. That's 37 points ahead of Joe Biden, who's in second place with 17.4%. You have Elizabeth Warren in third place with 10.1%. It seems like that last-ditch effort to uh, spend big with super PACs didn't pay off. Good thing she ruined her integrity just in this last attempt uh, of desperation, but, you know, obviously didn't help her out. We have Pete Buttigieg in fourth place with 8.7%, Tom Steyer in fifth place with 6.7%, and Amy Klobuchar in a distant six sixth place with 2.8% getting completely wiped out. Now, it's funny because going into this, this is what the aggregate polling data indicated, that Bernie Sanders was going to win and win pretty comfortably. Um, and so far, it seems as if he's going to overperform the polls. But again, still early. These numbers will change, but um, he's going to win. It's just a matter of what's going to be his margin of victory. But you already knew that Bernie was going to win, basically, if you follow the polling. And mainstream media was already trying to downplay. So you have Bloomberg News saying, yeah, Bernie's probably going to win, but really keep an eye out on that second place finisher. And this is exactly what they did in New Hampshire. They said, you know, I'm really looking for that key third place finisher. I, I think that was on MSNBC. Yeah, it was on MSNBC. I can't remember the uh, pundit who said it, but they're always going to try to find a way to spin it to downplay Bernie's victory. And he won the popular vote in three out of three primaries so far. Let me uh, just put this into perspective for you. No other candidate has ever done that in history in both the Democratic and Republican parties. Bernie's making history here. And you can tell that the pundits at MSNBC, they, they they know that the writing's on the wall. And all day, if you tune into MSNBC, unhinged. Their behavior is just, it's inexcusable. Like, their contempt for Bernie Sanders and his supporters, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, we could literally do a 40 to 50 minute video where I just talk about MSNBC clips. And I do have a couple of clips, but I mean, <laughs> they, they're they losing it. They are losing it. And they can't even contain themselves. So I want to play a clip from one caucus with an MSNBC reporter there. Look at the way that she reports Bernie Sanders dominating a particular caucus. Th these, again, are people who work on the Strip within two and a half miles of the Bellagio, largely people of color. Of those, the majority are Latino, and they are clearly, at least from eyeballing it, strongly in favor of Bernie Sanders with Joe Biden coming in. And as you can see, they are clearly, at least if I'm eyeballing it, oh, fuck, supporting Bernie Sanders. Back to you, Chris. <laughs> oh, my God. I watched that clip like 50 times. I kid you not. Um, I I'm exaggerating, but I mean, I watched it a lot. Wow. Just wow. Why don't you just say that you hate Bernie Sanders? Because it's just embarrassing. And... You have Chris Matthews saying the quiet part loud. I mean, back in, I want to say, early 2019, February, March, when Bernie Sanders was steamrolling everyone else in the polls before Biden jumped in, I predicted on Twitter, and I'm going to find this tweet because I'm going to throw it back in their faces, that a lot of moderates 
would probably opt for Donald Trump over Bernie Sanders if he's the nominee. We're going to have some never Bernie Democrats in the same way that we have these, you know, anti-Trump, never Trump Republicans. And Chris Matthews is kind of saying openly, maybe it's better for moderates if uh, Trump gets a re-election, if Trump gets re-elected instead of Bernie Sanders winning. Literally. Out of left field. I'm wondering whether the, the, the Democratic moderates want Bernie Sanders to be president. I mean, that's maybe a, a too exciting a question to raise. They don't like Trump at all. Do they want Bernie Sanders to take over the Democratic Party in perpetuity? Well, I mean, he takes it over. He sets the direction for the future of the party. Maybe they'd rather wait four years and put in a Democrat that they like. Thank you so much for admitting this, Chris. Thank you. Because now it's clear. Your biggest concern is not defeating Donald Trump. It's defeating Bernie Sanders. They scream about Bernie Sanders because they say, oh, he's going to get obliterated against Donald Trump. That's why we can't have, have him, you know, be the nominee because he can't beat Trump. But now when it seems like Bernie Sanders is going to be the nominee, well, they're thinking out loud, maybe it's better if Donald Trump gets another four years. They're unbelievable. Everything they said over the course of the last four years has all been a farce. It's been a lie. They've been lying to you. They claim they want to stop Trump. Their number one goal is to stop Bernie Sanders. That's what we're seeing. And on the subject of Chris Matthews, he's not taking Bernie's victory here very well because um, he compared Bernie's victory to uh, when France fell during World War II. I'm reading last night about the fall of France in the summer of 1940, and the general, Renault calls up Churchill and says, it's over. And Churchill said, how can it be? you got the greatest army in Europe. How can it be over? He said, it's over. So I had that suppressed feeling. I can't be as wild as Carville, but he is damn smart. And I think he's damn right on this one. Are you sure you're going to be okay, Chris? Like, I'm genuinely asking. Are you going to be okay? Like, are you going to be able to handle the results here? If Bernie becomes the nominee and the president? Like, are you? <laughs> is your head going to pop off your body and explode? <laughs> like... And I love how he referred to James Carville as smart. The candidate that James Carville endorsed, Michael Bennett, was polling at less than 1%, and he dropped out days after James Carville endorsed him. Maybe he doesn't have the best political instincts. That's just me, though. So look, Bernie won, and uh, we should celebrate. But let me just give all of my fellow burners a forewarning. Next Saturday is the South Carolina primary, and then a couple days later, will be Super Tuesday. We've got one last debate before Super Tuesday that is uh, on uh, on this Tuesday. So it's one week before Super Tuesday. And if you thought that the fear-mongering and concern trolling about Bernie Sanders and the attacks and the smears were vicious now, wait until you see what's going to happen in the lead-up to Super Tuesday. Like, when we get a couple days before Super Tuesday, elites will be losing their mind. MSNBC will be a parody of its former self. We're going to see them absolutely go crazy, but guess what? They're going crazy because we're kicking ass. Bernie Sanders is now three for three. He won the popular vote in the first three contests. So they're grappling with the reality of a Bernie Sanders nomination. And at this point, he may be unstoppable. He may be unstoppable. And everything that they said now about, well, you know, Bernie Sanders won the first couple of states that are predominantly white. Let's see how well he does in, you know, a state that's more diverse. Oh, he dominated that? Okay, uh, um, Russia. <laughs> so, look, we're, we're going to see a lot, but just keep everything in perspective. Don't let it get you down. Just remember, their attacks, their screeching will get a lot louder as we do better and better. But no... It's because we're winning and they're losing and they don't want their taxes to go up. They don't want Bernie Sanders to win. They hate him that bad. So, um, yeah, Bernie won. Let's all go celebrate. So, Senator Sanders, you're going to run for president. I am going to run for president. That's correct. It's going to be different this time. We're going to win. We have begun the political revolution and now we're going to complete it. As NBC News projects Bernie Sanders, the winner in Nevada. I think there is a realistic shot that he could win the Democratic nomination. Do not underestimate Bernie Sanders. You can tell how good I feel by how nervous the establishment is getting. Senator Bernie Sanders held the largest campaign rally of the presidential primary season so far. 
Senator Bernie Sanders has a clear and growing national lead. The reason that we won tonight is because of the hard work of so many volunteers. We need a social movement. I think Bernie Sanders understands that more than any other candidate. You know what? They should be getting nervous. Let's win the Democratic nomination. Let's defeat Donald Trump and let us transform America and create a government that works for all, not just the few.